Welcome to my channel. My name is Antonio Gervasoni. I'm a Peruvian composer and university professor, and this is the fourth video in my series on orchestration, which aims to introduce you to some key aspects of this wonderful art. In this video, I'll briefly explain the concept of complementary parts in orchestration. In the previous video, we saw how a group of instruments can be doubled by members of other groups to reinforce some element of the music that has been weakened by the uneven distribution of the voices between the instruments. A variant of this case involves using members of other groups not to reinforce, but to take a full voice for themselves. This is what the title of this video implies, using instruments from another family to pick up a voice that has been completely omitted from the predominant family. Examples of this abound in symphonic scores, all taking advantage of the fact that our perception is more focused on the outer voices of a chord than the inner ones. In fact, one of the ways to orchestrate a chord is to give the outer notes to instruments of the same timbre and the inner notes to instruments of another timbre. By this procedure, known as enclosure, the middle timbre is somewhat hidden because our attention is focused on the external notes and the effect is that we hear a more homogeneous result than that of the timbres placed on top of each other, which is known as juxtaposition. The other two ways to distribute the notes of a chord are known as interlocking and overlapping, shown here. In total, the four forms just mentioned give us different results, some more uniform, others more diverse. However, the examples given so far involve the use of only two timbres. If more are employed, the result tends to be less uniform. Neither uniformity nor diversity are good or bad in themselves. Which one to use depends on the effect the orchestrator wants. If the desire is to produce a more compact sound, then the voice or voices that have not been taken up by the predominant group should be given to a single timbre. Otherwise, if the idea is to produce a less cohesive sound, in which all voices have some independence, then perhaps it would be best to combine several timbres to create a more diverse result. You'll find examples of woodwind instruments taking entire voices that are not present in the strings in many scores. This is almost always done with bassoons, since their timbre has a lot of affinity with that of the cellos, but for it to work properly, the voice register must match the middle and or high registers of the bassoon. This is precisely what happens in this passage from the Second Symphony of Robert Schumann. The first violins and violas take the high voice in octaves, while the cellos and double basses do the same with the low voice. As you can see, the inner voices are in the bassoons. Clarinets can also be used for this procedure, especially if the register is too high. And flutes will probably work in soft dynamics, but oboes will stand out for their more prominent timbre, so their use is not recommended. Of course, if the intention is to have a non-uniform mix, then any woodwind will do. However, that's an unusual case, since what orchestrators normally look for is a uniform sound. As mentioned in the previous video, the strings have a different sound quality, because they are played in sections and only occasionally as individual instruments. For this reason, Using them as a complementary part will not work, except perhaps for a single double bass, which can stay in the background due to its taller timbre. It's also common to use brass instruments to take a complementary part with the strings, but this is done almost exclusively with horns, whose color, similar to that of bassoons, combines well with that of the strings, although not as well as bassoons.
The tuba might work as well, though I doubt it will go completely unnoticed, but a stellar timbre will help keep it from drawing too much attention. However, the trumpets will definitely not work for the same reason as the oboe, their timbre is too prominent. Trombones might work too if they are played very softly in their mid-low register, but I can't remember a score where a trombone is used to take a complementary part with the strings, but maybe a couple of them playing long notes could do the trick, something like this. It's true that it's a computer mock-up, but the timbres are realistic enough to give us an idea of the resulting sound. I can definitely hear the trombones, but they don't catch my attention much, although this could be more related to the fact that their part is less active. Regarding the possibility of the strings taking a complementary part with the brass instruments, I think the only case that would work is that of the double basses playing the lower voice. After all, double basses are generally used in concert bands, where they mix very well with the winds. The use of woodwind instruments to take a complementary part with the brass is rare, but I've seen it occasionally in some scores. One case is the use of several high woodwinds in unison in a loud tutti to continue the melody in the high register, where carrying the trumpet is too risky. Something like this. Another case is the use of bassoons in unison to supply a low part, as long as the dynamics are not very strong in the brass, and if a bass clarinet is available, it would be a great idea to add it. In orchestrations where there are only two horns, as in the classical period, bassoons can be used to create a four-voice harmony with them. If there's at least one horn on top of the bassoons, the procedure will make it appear that there are four horns, like in this example. Clarinets can also be used to continue a line of horns in the high register, and also oboes to complete the harmony with the trumpets, but good results are always subject to proper dynamics. Using brass instruments to take a complementary part with the woodwinds is another case that is almost exclusively limited to horns. The use of other brass instruments is rare for the reasons already explained. However, it would not be unthinkable to use the tuba, perhaps with a mute, to take the lower voice, or a trumpet in its slow register to harmonize with the oboes. Still, it's difficult to find examples of cases like these. Since a tutti is by definition the most diverse combination of all in an orchestra, using instruments from one family to take complementary parts with other families poses no problem. Within a loud tutti, at least, it would be difficult to notice that a trumpet, for example, is taking a part that is not present in the strings. In fact, this is a very common procedure. Just listen to this example. Did you notice that the strings only play the outer voices? I doubt you did. But there's so much to say about this case that I prefer to save it for an upcoming video. The only thing that should always be carefully considered is the dynamics. If, for example, a high-pitched voice is lacking in the woodwinds, don't give it to two trumpets in unison, unless your intention is to make the trumpet stand out. If the voice is secondary, a single trumpet will suffice, and make sure that the other voices around it especially the main one, are well reinforced. Even a solo trumpet is a very powerful instrument. The use of percussion to take a complementary part with any of the other groups is quite rare. In fact, I can't think of a specific example of a symphonic score where this happens, but I can theorize a few scenarios where this could be attempted. The main characteristic of percussion instruments is that their sound is short. Therefore, brevity is the keyword here. Consider, for example, 
a pizzicato chord on the strings where several notes are missing. It could be a polychord or a cluster, and we may fear that splitting the strings could weaken the sound. In such a case, it wouldn't be impossible to think of giving the missing notes to a marimba in its middle register, enclosed by the strings. If this happens while the winds are also playing, it would perhaps work. In a different example, a bass drum could also be used to give a hit on a register not available for timpani. If accompanied by double bass pizzicato, the bass drum would sound like it's tuned. This effect can be seen in several scores, notably The Firebird and The Rite of Spring by Stravinsky. A complementary part is one that has been omitted from the predominant family and therefore must be taken by an instrument from another family. Since the desire in this case is to produce a compact sound, the complementary part should preferably be one of the internal voices of the harmony, but could also be the lowest. The suns and horns are commonly used as complementary parts of the strings, although rare cases, clarinets and flutes may also be used, and perhaps trombones and tuba too, but oboes and trumpets will stand out, and for that reason won't work well. The use of strings as complementary parts of woodwinds or brass instruments is uncommon, except in the case of double basses, either solo or in a group. In a tutti, this procedure doesn't pose any problems, and any instrument from one family can be used as a complementary part of another. Some percussion instruments, such as the marimba and bass drum, can be used in this way, but examples are rare. Thank you for watching this video and subscribe to be notified when I post a new one. I give private lessons online on orchestration. If you want to know more, click on the linked video or visit my website. The link is in the description below.